Today I'm going to run you through how to deploy an open fast function from the store and try it out. But first of all, we'll install OpenFAS using a tool called Kind or Kind from one of the Kubernetes SIGs. Now the first thing we generally do is head over to the docs and go through the deployment guide. That will generally point us at the Helm chart. And there's a number of instructions that we can run. Now, within the OpenFAS community, we found that we we're running these quite a lot. In fact, we we're also running them for CI, continuous integration. And so what I did with a couple of guys was broke out that um, guide from Helm into a number of different scripts. We have things here like um, create dev, which creates a kind cluster, installs Tiller, does a deployment. But let's actually try it out. So on my computer, I have Docker for Mac running. If you were to have a Linux or Windows computer, this should work just the same in bash. And then we just simply do create dev. I have the version of kind right now that is shipping with Docker 113, but there's a slightly newer version you can grab from the GitHub page, and that's going to have 114 on it. And what we'll see is this will really just take a, a number of moments to set up kind, the first step. The next one is to install Tiller. And this actually uses a few things just to make it a little bit more reliable and robust, which is we have this ability to wait when we install Helm. Now that will block until Helm is up and running and the container is pulled. This is perfect for CI or where you've ever felt tempted to add a, a, like an arbitrary wait somewhere. And then that turns out that isn't quite enough. We also do a kubectl rollout status. This is an amazing feature. If you've not used it yet, you can use it to make sure that your deployment has come up and is up and running. The next thing we do, if we go back to script, is deploy. And deploy will take the namespaces for OpenFAS from the repo, apply them. It will then figure out what the best Shasm tool is. It's different on Linux and Windows, and take a few random bytes and generate a password for us. You can make this longer and you can make it more complex. It's completely up to you. And then we create a basic auth username and password. This will be used in the basic auth secret and bound to OpenFAS. Next, the Helm chart will run. And as we can see on the right hand side, we've just installed our namespaces. And again, we have this wait. Now I'm used to seeing Helm finish instantly, but it never is finished because those Docker images are downloading and those containers are starting. This, despite the wait, is actually um, pretty reliable. Once we've done that, the next thing that will happen is run function, which will basically port forward um, the gateway to a local computer. And this is a cool bit. It was going to capture a process ID so we can remove that port forwarding later. The reason we do port forwarding is because Kind is basically running in a single Docker image or Docker container. We need some kind of connectivity in and out. We're not going to get a load balancer. Ingress isn't going to work. So we're going to port forward the gateway. Now, you can see that we've got this accepted message for the echo function, which came from this line, deploy. We're then running through 1 to 100 until it's actually become available, and that should be up and running. What you normally get is a, or what you will get is a password.txt file, and this will now allow us to access that port forwarded website on the port 311112 using admin and the password given. So now we have OpenFAS up and running. So I wanted to show you the function I just built, which was the curl function. And this one, if you wanted to deploy it locally, we could just git clone the repo and do fast deploy using the stack YAML. But this is actually in the store now. And there's two ways we can access the store. Faz CLI store list, and we see curl. We could deploy it, and we can even I believe there's a command that would allow us to inspect it. And that gives us what GitHub repo that comes from. 
and some additional information as well. But because we've got the UI open, let's try that. We hit curl and deploy. Now this is a relatively small Docker image, so it shouldn't take too long to pull down. And then we'll see not ready, go to ready, and we'll get the invoke button. So the way this works, it actually pipes the text directly into the binary curl through bash. We have a Docker file that adds the classic watchdog that you may know from OpenVAS. And then the process we're going to run for each request is a shell script. So in effect, we're wrapping shell with HTTP. And simply we have cat xargs. Now, if you've not used xargs, it's a really nice way of taking multiple lines and running the command for each one. So what I'd like to try is accessing, let's say, the gateway through the protected route system info. When I hit invoke, I'm getting invalid credentials come back. And I can actually put in additional curl flags here to see any headers and additional data that may have been missing before. So we do actually have the password. And we can construct a curl URL, admin password at, and invoke this. There we go. Now, if we remove the in the I, we should even be able to invoke this in JSON mode, and we could download a JSON file from it if we wanted to. And any of the other um, endpoints should work here, like functions, or if we want to find the status of the, the curl function itself. There we go, we've got the data coming back. So in a very short period of time, we've been able to deploy OpenVAS on a computer and have it up and running. So the next thing is if you wanted to test a PR or a specific change, what you can do is you can look at the, the guide for how we um, deploy this in chart and open faz and search for the word development. Test a local Helm chart. So we could then run this command here and it will overwrite my development version and I can pass specific overrides, I can pass a values file. And as you'll see, there are a number of different overrides that might be interesting for you. If you're testing a specific gateway version, then you may wanna update gateway.image. And for anything that's not documented, it will be found in the values YAML. Here, for instance, I can change the node port that might be bound. I can turn scale from zero off. If I'm doing some testing with a really long machine learning function, I can up the timeouts. Now, we should see a PID file here called OAuth kind PID forward. That's what we're going to use to now tear down the cluster and the port forwarding. Now that Docker image is gone, our cluster has been removed and we're back to where we were again. So if we had another PR to test, again, we could just simply run contrib create dev. And these are exactly the same scripts that are running in the CI process, which is really useful because we know that these are going to be used and that um, it's going to create a consistent dev environment. The only other thing that you might be interested in is that you can specify your own name for the kind cluster. Now this might be good if you wanted to do something like have a canary A, canary B, or if you wanted some kind of um, test and dev environment, you could do this too. So I hope you found that interesting. In a very short period of time, we deployed the curl function from the store. We got the OpenVAS UI up and we started invoking code. If you want to find out where these scripts are, they're in the contrib folder in Fasnetis, and I hope you enjoyed the video.